and those actions are deeply appreciated. We look forward to the time when we are able to reward you for your sacrifices. As most of you are aware, the combined districts of Washtenaw County have voted to place a two mill operational millage on November's ballot. Its success is imperative. Our foundation grant is in jeopardy. Recent economic forecasts indicate that we will lose anywhere between $500 to $800 per student in the 2010-2011 school year. Uh, this will have a de devastating effect on our operations. The work has already begun. Parents, community members, uh, board members, administrators, and union leaders have adopted the model for this school year. <laughs> it takes the millage to educate a child. It will take all of us joining together in a unified effort to make uh, continued financial support for education and reality. The following slides provide our rationale behind supporting and gassing the millage in this November's election, and with your help, we can succeed. Thank you. Okay, so what is the issue? And our schools are seeking a regional enhancement millage. Uh, why is it needed? Um, school funding is heading towards a financial crisis point. Uh, and it, if you read the NR news, which was around, uh, they have talked about that. Um, in which districts will receive funding? It will be every district in Washtenaw County. And as you can see, for the Saline district, it would mean that we receive roughly $3,700,000 a year for the next five years. Um, given the predicted shortfall for 2010-2011 of almost $4 million, this will help bridge that financial gap, and that's why it's so important. So what we're, we're asking you to do is please vote on Tuesday, November 3rd, and uh, hopefully we can do this. Another president, um, uh, Lou Candiotti, is president of the Foundation for Salinaria Schools. Many of you are aware of the partnership that's been developed over the last 20 years with the Foundation for Salinaria Schools. They continue to support what we do in the classroom. I consider them to some degree to be the research and development arm of Salinaria Schools. They provide funding for innovative projects in each classroom. It's exciting to have this partnership because, frankly, as President Freeze alluded to, the reality of our funding is becoming more and more vital that we have opportunities within our community that are supportive of our community. Mr.
that hopefully you will reap those benefits as Scott described to you in the research and development outcome. So what are we gonna do? We're gonna reorganize. We've established five subcommittees so that we can target specific strategies that ultimately will end up with A, more money in our pocket, B, more money to distribute, C, greater value. So, we looked at ourselves and said, what can we do better? <clears throat> we can have a fund development group whose sole purpose will be to come up with strategies and implement those strategies to solicit funds. In the next month, you're gonna see what those strategies are and how we're gonna go about implementing them. Two, we're gonna improve our communications, both internal and external. We recognize that several people in the community and several organizations don't even know we exist because we've been quiet about the work that we do. Well, it's time to change that. So we have a communication subcommittee that's gonna target things like website and enhancements to that website. Communications to the staff and faculty here within the school district as well as communications to the community itself. Again, over the next month, you're gonna see what those strategies are and how they're gonna play themselves out. You actually have begun to see some of those by having foundation trustees come to meetings throughout the schools. So whether it's the administration meeting or the PTO meeting or the faculty meeting, uh, you're gonna start seeing more trustees out and about. A third area, we have a grants and allocations committee. Again, the purpose of that group is specific to the programmatic initiatives within each of the classrooms. What is it that you need? What dollar amounts should we be providing? And how can we go about doing that? So we've kind of shaken that whole process up a little bit too. Um, didn't make sense to all of us to have a request in November and a distribution in December, followed by a request in May and a distribution in June. This didn't make sense that if the students are leaving in the school year, why we're writing a check for something. So you're gonna see that re-engineered at the same time. Again, answering the question, how do we provide better value to our constituency? These things are all gonna culminate um, at the end of the year so that hopefully I can share with you that we have done our job, that we've done it better than we did this past year, and that we're gonna make strides to improve even upon that success in the coming year after that, which would be the next school year. So I thank you for your continued support. I look forward to providing that greater value to you, but not only me, the 17 trustees of the foundation. I want you to be open and honest with your feedback, which we have taken, and one of those is improving our communication. But if you have ideas now for how we can or who we can touch in order to improve our bottom line so that we can distribute even more money, I encourage you to provide that information to any one of the 17 trustees. And I want to give you an analogy. Many of you may not know that I'm in the healthcare business. And we speak with physicians all the time about identifying potential leads, and oftentimes the first response we get back from a physician is, look, I, I can't ask anybody for money. You know, that's what our job is, right? So I don't want that physician to ask somebody for money. What I want that physician to do is to identify the lead. And as, as you might be uncomfortable in a situation like that, believe it or not, there are telltale signs of people who are willing to donate that you can then share with someone and let them follow up on that. And I'll give you a great example. The young woman, very, very ill, in a critical care unit in the pediatric hospital at, at uh, the University of Michigan. Um, several family members were grateful for the, for the compassion that was shown, not only to the patient, but to the family um, but also ask for, what, what can I do? I, I thank you very much for what you've done for me. What can I do? Okay, there's your sign right there. 
Who could I talk to about participating or volunteering? Sign number two. How can I help improve a situation that we've talked about that we think could be better? Situation number three. Okay? That's all you need to hear. Now, as a parent, and you've heard me brag about all the teachers that I've been involved with, the administrators I've been involved with, I can tell you as a parent, I made those same statements to those teachers when my, my children were involved in the school district. What can I do to help? I see you're stressed out. What can I do to help? Okay. We all will see those signs. What I'm asking you to do is, is tell me who they are. And you can tell me, or you can tell the 16 other trustees on the board. And we're going to take it from them. But we need your help in that. So challenge yourselves as we challenge ourselves to take it to the next level. And together, I truly believe, not only will we double the investments that were made this year, I can guarantee you we will triple them. And so the target we're setting this year is $80,000. I know we can do that. I also know that we can do that with your help. Each and every one of you stand tall in what you deliver. That's how we're going to do it. You can demonstrate it every day. The community can recognize it every day. And they can act upon that recognition. So help me. Are you in? That, that would be a yeah word. <laughs> I'm in. Yeah. All right. So let's do it together this year. Because next year I want to stand here and tell you, we got more, but more importantly, we gave more. Okay? Thank you. You know, we did an activity at our administrative retreat where they kind of, they helped, frankly, they helped me write it. Um, but I was wondering, you know, what, what should our slogan be for this year? And I'll be honest, the first thing that came to my mind was swine flu. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought, well, we can do swine flu for two very good reasons, okay? First one is I have a great logo for swine flu. <laughs> And the second, it does tie back to our agricultural roots in our community, and I thought, you know what? That's what, that's what it's about here. It's more about tradition and history, and I thought, that's, that's good, Scott. You're on the right path. But then I thought, you know, I really can't do that. Um, I thought, you know what? We, we, in Celine, we need a, a little bit of a more professional design to our program. We need something else, so a little more official slogan. So, of course, what's the first thing that comes to my mind? H1 <laughs> seems more medical in nature, crisper, easier, and I could come up with a much better logo for us to use, highlighting our president. <laughs> and uh, and then, so I, I decided then, you know, I'm going to be talking a lot about H1N1 this year. I'm going to be talking a lot about swine flu. I probably don't want to make that the slogan for this year, um, as though it will probably dominate the early parts of this year in terms of our collective psyche. Mm -hmm. So I said, no, I'm going to do something different. So I thought I could focus on change. Well, we all know how well that worked out. <laughs> but I thought, no, hang on, hang on, hang on. I could, maybe I can improve it. Maybe I can improve it. So I went to, uh, as, as most of our 21st century learners, when I went to Wiktionary.org, and I, I pulled open, I said, okay, what, what does change mean? What could, what could we do to change? So I looked, and the first thing I got was a, was a process of becoming different. I thought I could talk about 21st century skills. Um, then the next comment was that small denominations of money given in exchange for larger denominations. Tied perfectly, enhancement village, uh, foundation, the budget issues we have. The next was replacement, and I started to get a little worried. Um, 
about replacement because I thought if I keep talking about change, the staff and school board are going to want to replace me. So, and then the next one actually was uh, change on pitching for baseball. And that it got me started thinking about Fernando Rodney, who has probably one of the best change ups in baseball. So then I went to DetroitTigers.com and spent the rest of the evening looking at the September schedule. So, thankfully, my, my attempts at change are, are long in the past now, they're, they're gone. My, my next idea was, this is, this is embarrassing, um, hold, hold on, kid. <laughs> what are you guys doing here? We're the new staff. Hi, I'm Nicole Bilson. I'm the new French teacher at the middle school. Hi, my name is Joel Scott, and I'm the new orchestra director at the high school. Hi, I'm Mark Massmore. I'm the new Spanish teacher at the high school and the middle school. Hi, I'm Kathy Reddies. I'm the counselor and English teacher at the alternative high school. Hi, I'm Matt Sia. I'm the new seventh grade language arts social studies teacher. Hi, I'm Jeff Waltz. I teach PE and health at the high school. Hi, I'm Stacy Cherry. I'm the new teacher consultant at Heritage. Hi, I'm Kim Franco. I'm the new teacher consultant at the high school. Pilar, Pilar, yeah, I, I, need, I need my speech. Please? Okay, okay, thank you. Here's your speech. Thank you. You're welcome. You never seem to forget your eye. I know. <laughs> Remarkable is doing the right thing 
even when no one is watching. Being remarkable is a choice. Ladies and gentlemen, let's make this a remarkable school year. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.